So far we've done a few different uh, tutorials for creating drawings. One was to create the imperial border itself and be able to add that into uh, the drawing resources and then be able to put it into your individual drawings. The other was to show you how to set up uh, dimension uh, styles. And then uh, I've also shown you how to create the detailed drawings themselves. So now what I want to do is show you how to create this an assembly drawing. The parts of an assembly drawing are a view or multiple views that show all the parts and how they relate to each other. Uh, it will include a parts list and corresponding balloons or leaders uh, with item numbers pointing to them. And notice that they correspond. So the lever is number four. There's two of them. And in the, in the parts list, the description is lever. So uh, I'm just going to go through now and show you how to create this drawing. So to create a new drawing, go over to the tree, right click and say new sheet. We're going to put in the date today. Scale should be NTS. That means not to scale. Uh, we don't want somebody to scale, uh, take a scale and take measurements off of this drawing. So even though we will scale the view, we don't want it to be uh, listed in the title block. And this is going to end up being drawing number two in your list. So we'll probably have to go back and renumber some of the other drawings that you've created. And title is going to be uh, assembly clevis. And then we're going to say OK. And now we've got this new, new drawing. And what we need to do is to go in and place a view. So I'm going to go to the base view. And this time I'm going to select the assembly file. So I'm going to go to uh, my browser and select the assembly file and open it. And then what I want to do is select a view that's going to work out well for me. So something like this would be good. I could possibly do a left view. Uh, these ones not necessarily uh, are as good at showing the parts. So, uh, And again, you could do multiple views if you can't see all the parts in one view easily. So I'm going to click now to place the view and then escape. I forgot to change it to a shaded view, so I'm just going to double click into the view and open up the same window, and I'm going to change it to shaded, and I'm going to set my scale to, I think 3 16ths will work out well for this. So then I'm going to say OK, and now I've got a good looking view. So my next task is to add in the balloons. So I'm going to go to manage, sorry, I'm going to go to annotate, and then I'm going to go over into this area, and I'm going to click on auto balloon. Then I'm going to, it says add or remove components. I'm going to select everything. I want all of the components of this assembly to be added into the, uh, into the ballooning. Then I want to leave this check mark here for ignore multiple instances. So I don't want to have a separate leader for each of the levers and each of the keys. So uh, it'll ignore the multiple instances. Over in here, placement, I can uh, click on placement and that's what horizontal would look like. Uh, I can go and uh, once I place them, then I can go and change the actual location. So it's really not important which one I select. Vertical would be something like that. It's just helping me to get started uh, in whichever method I think I'm going to use. So I'm going to use a round this time and just see. Uh, hopefully that will work out well. And then I can say apply. And now I've got uh, these item numbers pointing to each of the objects. So item number one is supposed to be the clevis and notice that it's really not all that clear so I can at any time go through and I can change the location for the uh, the balloon I can uh, number two should be the uh, pin so I'm going to make sure that this is obviously going to the pin and not to the uh, key key should be number three so I'm going to again make sure that it points to the key and number four should be the lever. And again, it's not all that obvious, so I'm going to move it and make it obvious that it's pointing at number four. And you want to make sure that uh, the, the balloons are easy to see, nicely arranged, and so on, so that they're not crossing over with something uh, that uh, would be in the way. And the next thing that we need to do is to go and put in the parts list. So I'm going to click up here. Again, it's on the annotate tab. I'm going to go to parts list. I'm going to go and select my assembly file, say open, and then I can say OK. And now it allows me to put in the 
uh, parts list. I'm going to click up into the upper uh, left corner. And now I've got this parts list that's been generated. The part number is really what I want to be the description. And those names come from the file names that you used for each of your parts. So you want to make sure that you use good file names and that will end up in this, uh, in this table. Item numbers are in here and the quantities. So notice that for item number uh, four, which is the lever, there's quantity two and it's identified as the lever. Now I don't want this column description, but I do want this one to say uh, description. So I can make all sorts of edits to the table. I'm going to double click into the table and bring up the dialog box for it. There's things that you can go through over in here, change the sorting, uh, different uh, things that we can do, table layout, etc. What I'm going to use to begin with is column chooser. So I click on that first button and I want to keep these first three columns. I want to get rid of description. So I'm going to say remove. If there was something else I wanted to put in here, I could add it in. But now I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to apply it just to see how it looks. And notice that the size of the, of the parts list has changed and it's made it uh, look good over here. But I've got to change this to description. So I'm going to go over into uh, the table here, click on the column and right click on it and go to format column. Then I can go into heading and change what the heading is. So I'm going to make it description. And I could change the uh, alignment of text. So for the heading, I want them all to be center uh, justified. If I didn't for some reason, I could change it and make it uh, uh, left justified or right justified. And for the value for this particular column, I, I think it looks good with it left justified. Notice that the other two are uh, center justified. So I'm going to leave that all the way it is and say OK and apply. And now this looks good. If I wanted to change the, the size of the font, etc., I could go through and do all that kind of thing as well. Okay, So uh, I'm going to say OK. And now I've got a good looking uh, assembly drawing. And that's all that there is to it. So the last uh, drawing that uh, I'm going to show you how to create is a cover sheet. I'm going to click in the uh, tree here right click and say uh, new sheet and then put in my date that's going to be drawing number one it's like the cover of your uh, project uh, and then I'm going to call it cover sheet say OK and now I've got a drawing called cover sheet the scale again is NTS and it's drawing number one so now I'm going to place a view and this is going to be what uh, goes on, uh, is going to be the first drawing to cover the, or uh, of the set of working drawings. So I want something that's going to look good. So I'm going to maybe go to uh, one of my 3D views, or again, maybe I want to use more than one view and make it look good that way. So I could place the view here. I forgot to go and change it again uh, to, be, uh, to be shaded. So I'm going to change it to shaded and my scale seems to be good. So I'm going to say, okay. Uh, possibly I want to put in another view. Maybe I want to put in uh, just the clevis. I could go in and put it in just the clevis if I wanted to. So I could put in more than one view. And maybe here I want this one to be top left. Or maybe I do want it to be top right just so that it looks like it's over in the same area. Uh, again, it's what you want to show on your, uh, on your cover sheet to make it look good. And then I'm going to put in some text. So I'm going to go to the annotate tab, go to text, click, and it opens up the dialog box. I'm going to change my text height to 0.25 and I'm going to make it underlined. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put in uh, clevis assembly project and say OK. And that looks good there. Uh, I could move this around if I needed to. I can move my views around, etc. So now I've got my cover sheet. Uh, now notice that the when I created the two files, it doesn't give me the uh, correct name over here. So I'm going to click into this one and change it. I'm going to call this cover sheet. And I'm going to call this one assembly. Okay. 
and I want these to be in order. Uh, that's going to be better when I plot them. So I'm going to click on uh, my cover sheet and I'm going to drag it up. I'm sorry, I'm going to escape. I'm going to make my cover sheet active. Oh, uh, somehow I've gotten into a sketch mode here, so I don't want sketch mode. Okay, and so now I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to make this drawing uh, active, and I'm going to just drag it up in the tree. I'm going to make it my first drawing in the list. I'm going to do the same thing with the assembly. I'm going to drag it up and make it the second drawing in the list. Then I've got my clevis, my pin, my lever, and my key. And then I had also created a separate drawing, which I'm going to now uh, delete. That uh, was just to show you what it would look like at the beginning. So I'm going to delete that one. Now I've got cover sheet, assembly, clevis, pin, lever, and key. And so the last thing you need to be able to do now is to be able to export this to a PDF. So you would go up to the application menu, go to export, and select PDF. Uh, so we're not actually going to plot the drawings. We're going to plot it to a PDF file, an electronic file. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to make this one uh, drawing clevis 2. Uh, just because I've already got Drawing Clevis, uh, and I won't bother to replace that one, but you can call yours Drawing Clevis. What is important is to click on Options down here and select All Sheets rather than just Current Sheet because we want all the drawings to show up in this one PDF file. Then I'm going to say OK, and then I can say Save. And then it's going to create my... Uh, PDF file and notice that in my PDF file I have each of the drawings and now I've got what is considered a working drawing set and th this PDF file is what you're going to upload uh, at the end of the project to the Dropbox. You'll also upload your WMV file which is your animation showing the parts rotating around and again that is shown in the uh, assembly tutorial how to create that animation. I hope this uh, tutorial has been useful to you.